Hello and welcome to another great week here on the Jet Set. Coming up, we have lots planned for you. Where can you find the tallest, fastest, and longest dive coaster in California? We've got the story. Ooh, I can't wait to hear about that. And Christopher Elliott joins us from the Washington Post to discuss the fighting in Ukraine and its impacts on global travel. All of this plus the latest travel news is taking off right here on the Jet Set. Welcome aboard. Are you ready to go? Bobby Laurie and Nikki Noya have your ticket to travel, food, fitness, and everything you need for an on-the-go lifestyle. It's time to Jet Set. It's time to brace yourself for travel news on this week's edition of Here's This, powered by thejetset.com. At a moment when COVID-19 cases are falling and the world is loosening restrictions and entry requirements to encourage an increase in international travel, the aviation industry is presented with yet a new challenge. The airline sanctions imposed on Russia due to its invasion of Ukraine are likely to wreak havoc and that will result in delays and cancellations on long haul flights. Route changes are possible. Also refueling stops with airfare increases that cover the extra costs. Yeah. Things are going to get a little bit iffy for a while. Yeah. So far, 36 countries around the world have banned Russian airlines and cargo planes from their respective airspace. And officials from, Uni uh, from United revealed that all flights that enter Russian airspace would be canceled or rerouted due to the ongoing conflict in Ukraine. That's a lot of rerouting because it's quite a yep. big country. You know, it's weird. <sighs> Through COVID, the ripple effect. Now, this mm -hmm. going on right now, this just terrible thing and all of its ripple effects, and especially with travel, I mean, that is, this is crazy. And you know, just, I think it was just in the last few hours, Sabre, which mm -hmm. the company that is the back end of the Russian Airlines reservation system, because there's Aeroflot and S7, mm -hmm. stopped their support for those airlines. So now you can't even buy tickets on Aeroflot or S7 because Sabre dropped out. And then also Airbus and Boeing said that they're not going to provide technical support for their airplanes any longer. So everything is just so grounded. So it's pretty much going to be grounded. Now, mm -hmm. quote, there are a lot of flights that US airlines fly over Russia to go to Asia and other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. And they're going to factor in a range of things as they, um, figure out how they're going to reroute these planes. That was actually mm -hmm. by Jen Psaki, according uh, from the White House, who said that. That, because what, you would have to go, I mean, how would you, you would have well, to fly all the way down and then around? There was a couple of flights, if you, you could watch on flight radar, there mm -hmm. was a plane that left, I think it was from Moscow. It was on its way to New York City mm -hmm. and it got about over Greenland or Iceland mm -hmm. and it had to, tr it just did circles because then we restricted the flights over US airspace mm -hmm. and then it went back to Moscow. So it was just in the air for like 10 hours and it literally went nowhere. That's, what? And there was a few like in, in the past couple of days that we were watching, like they would leave Cuba mm -hmm. and fly over like the Eastern seaboard and then go over, over to Moscow. But now they can't do that anymore either. <sighs> what is going on? Well, what? What? It's just one thing after another. Now, I just, yeah. like, just like we were saying though, mm -hmm. Russian national carrier Aeroflot has already canceled flights to the United States, Canada, Mexico, Cuba, and the Dominican Republic since it can no longer fly over Canadian airspace as well. And all of this will have a ripple effect depending on the length of the war there and whether or not these sanctions will carry over even if the conflict ends. Delta Airlines even announced that it's suspending its code share agreement with Aeroflot. So even mm -hmm. when this is over, there might not be an easy way for you to get anywhere. anywhere. This is, this is exhausting. <laughs> I just feel like the world is so weary after coming out of COVID and now we're dealing with this because everything is global now. Yeah. It's not just in one place. Everything is so connected and so we're all connected through this and to this. So it's just like. Well, it's a good question to ask of like, why are, why, why is this happening? <laughs> yes. Like, That's why you have to keep watching the jet. Why does this need to be happening? Like what? There's no reason for this. No, and I just feel I have a lot of Ukrainian friends who their families are taking in refugees in Slovakia and it's just, um, it's heartbreaking. And as a mom seeing, I'm going to start crying, seeing moms. In... Don't do it. I'm not going to cry. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay, I'm not crying. Nonetheless, it doesn't need to be happening, no. but it could disrupt air travel here in the United States as well. So you do need to check with your carrier before you go anywhere, especially if you're planning international travel. Yes. Right? I'm okay. <laughs> we will be right back in 30 okay. seconds with more of the Jet Set. Nikki needs a tissue. 
Artificial intelligence is increasingly prominent in our everyday lives, from smart home devices to navigation and music streaming. So what does this mean for individuals and businesses in your area of the country? Well, joining us from the Chamber of Commerce Technology Engagement Center is Jordan Crenshaw to share his insights into the future of AI. Hi, Jordan. Welcome to the show. Hi. So how is artificial intelligence impacting your local economies? Well, artificial intelligence is no longer science fiction. It's at our doorstep and all around us at this point. Uh, it's helping scientists develop vaccines and improve patient care. Uh, it's protecting us against cyber attacks, which is critically important right now. It's alerting uh, customers to bank fraud and even providing more economic inclusion to help uh, underserved communities get access to credit to buy a home or uh, also start a small business. But globally, AI is expected to add 14% to the global economy and, and GDP uh, by 2030, and that's no small, small number. What does the Chamber's AI Commission hope to accomplish to propel the U.S. into global leadership in AI? Well, America is in a race for AI dominance, and the nation that leads in artificial intelligence is going to lead the global economy for years to come. Uh, China's trying to beat us on research and development. Uh, Europe is trying to write regulations that could impact us at home. And it's becoming increasingly evident uh, that we need uh, to fill that leadership void and lead in the United States on this incredibly important issue. Um, we have uh, started an AI commission led by former members of Congress uh, and also experts in academia and uh, industry to develop bipartisan policy solutions on how do we make sure that AI is fairly used? How do we get the workforce ready uh, for the future? And, and finally, once again, how do we compete internationally uh, against countries like China? Um, and in and, and doing this, we're going out throughout the country holding field hearings, taking public comment. And if you'd like to learn more, uh, you can visit our website at AmericanInnovators.com backslash AI Commission. Thanks for joining us, Jordan. Thank you. We've got to take a quick break, but we've got lots more of the Jet Set coming up in 60 seconds. This day has been a roller coaster for you, hasn't it? My life is a roller coaster. And well, I love them so started. much. <laughs> We're gonna go from that, Nikki, to yeah. talking about Americans, because they eat three billion pizzas a year. Did you know that? I bet. Well, look, that's <laughs> that's the number according to recent surveys. That number could go up due to an upcoming promotion from Blaze Pizza, one of the fastest growing pizza chains in the country. Joining us today is Chef Brad Kent, co-founder and chief culinary officer of Blaze Pizza, to share how you can qualify for a $3.14 pizza with unlimited toppings by downloading an app. Hi, Chef, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I can't wait to talk pizza with you. Why should Pi Day become a national pizza holiday? Because celebrating pizza is something that we should do. I, I don't think it should be a holiday one day. I actually think it should be 365 days a year. What are the latest pizza topping trends? Latest pizza topping trends, I think they're like, we, we're seeing so much with the plant-based lately. So I think the plant-based cheese like we have, and we've got a plant-based protein like we have, those are things that are very popular, um, like in the media, and a lot of people are trying them. But people seem to default back to their good old favorites and, and uh, you know, like pepperoni, sauce, cheese, those tend to be really, really popular. And then the thing that's nice about Blaze is we have all these delicious finishes. So once you get done with your pizza and it comes out of our live fired oven, you're then able to put all these different fun things on top, like extra virgin olive oil, barbecue sauce, ranch dressing, if you believe in that, I don't, um, and wild baby arugula, which I love on, on, a, on a pizza at the end. How can you qualify for an 11 inch any toppings pizza for only $3.14? It's really, really simple. So all you have to do is download the Blaze Pizza app at the App Store. And then on there, you'll see a little link at the bottom for uh, uh, join our rewards. And once you join the rewards, as long as you do that on or before Pi Day 314, you will have a kind of a code that's in your, in your app for a $3.14 pizza, an 11 inch pizza that you can um, use either on 314 or until the end of the month. And you can build your pizza however you like. We've got about 42 different toppings and we've got everything from fresh vegetables to roasted vegetables to meats and cheeses and sauces and finishes. It's, it's a great deal and it's really, really a great uh, thing to share with the whole family. How can our viewers get involved? More information is really easy to do. All you do is go to, do is go to blazepizza.com, the website, or you can go right to our app, which is the Blaze Pizza app, and you'll have information there. 
Thanks for joining us, Chef. We here at the Jet Set have been watching the Russian invasion of Ukraine and the desperate migration of Ukrainians to safer places in Europe. The violence in the region has made travel in the region dangerous and in some cases, unfortunately, deadly. For many Americans, the tragedy may seem remote, but it is closer than you think. With us is Washington Post columnist and consumer advocate Christopher Elliott to tell us more about how the invasion is affecting global travel. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, sure thing. Several airlines have either pulled out of routes in and near Russia and others have been banned from European and American airports. How is that affecting global travel both for people trying to leave the affected region and people traveling around Europe? Yeah, so as of right now, you had the European uh, and the US uh, aviation authorities and governments banning Russian planes from their airspace and then in retaliation you had the Russians banning uh, the Europeans and the Americans from their airspace. Uh, mainly, basically, it's just some planes had to be rerouted. You have uh, it's affecting some Asian routes, and then um, then mostly Aeroflot, which flies into a, a couple of U.S. cities. Other than that, not much at all. What we are mm -hmm. seeing, though, is higher fuel prices. Uh, we're, we may be seeing higher airfares as well, and so that could has the potential to affect a lot of uh, American travelers. And we were just talking about earlier the news that just came out, I think, last night or two uh, about Sabre even dropping their support for Aeroflot and S7 and Boeing and Airbus not not supporting the any technical issues that these airlines might have. So for pretty much what you're saying is, you know, if you're traveling on a Russian airline, you're going to find yourself in a little bit of a problem, but everyone else should pretty much be OK. I mean, if we have a, a European trip booked what should we be aware of? Should we cancel? No, I mean, my advice is don't freak out, at least not yet. The conflict is still uh, contained to Ukraine and some of the border areas there. And that's really far away from uh, where most uh, people go on vacation. The popular European destinations like Rome and Paris and, and, uh, and London are far, far away from uh, anything that's happening. What we have been seeing is some tour operators and some cruise lines changing their itineraries. I just spoke with someone a few minutes ago who said that her cruise was changed from a port of call in St. Petersburg to two days at sea. And they're doing that kind of quietly. They're, they don't want to upset anyone. So they're, they're not really making big announcements about that. We were, Christopher, we were just talking earlier about the ripple effect that this has, and I didn't even think about cruises having to be rerouted. I mean, our producer Brad and I were, we did a tour on the Baltic Sea not too long ago, and we did stop in St. Petersburg, and mm -hmm. it was one of the most beautiful places I had ever been to. So speaking of cruises, like, what else should people keep in mind you know, well, you know, I was happy to see that a, uh, that a lot of the cruise lines were supporting their Ukrainian employees that are mm -hmm. on board the ship, trying to give them every amenity that's available to them to let them get mm -hmm. in touch with their family members. Then the same for their for, for all their Russian crew members as well, mm -hmm. trying to, just like you said, not create too much of a stir, but let mm -hmm. them know that the cruise line is there for them and they're doing the same for the passengers. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, we are just emerging from a, this pandemic and <laughs> Nikki's been busting at her at the chops here, waiting to get out there and start traveling again. Mm -hmm. But leisure travel just started looking up for the summer of this year. How much of a setback do you think this is going to be for European travel as a whole? Uh, we don't know yet because we don't know what's going to happen next. Uh, mm -hmm. How crazy is Putin? What's, which country is he going to invade next? Hopefully he'll be contained here and the crisis will come to an end uh, peacefully mm -hmm. or relatively peacefully. I don't know how much more peacefully it can be that he did invade. But um, right now, though, I think that a lot of people are overreacting. They say, oh, I've got a European vacation plan. I should not go. And that, I think, is the wrong reaction. Because, again, most people stay in Western Europe. They don't go to Eastern Europe. Um, so what we, I think we just have to wait and see to, to see what's going to go on. Hey, Christopher, there's so much to talk to you about. Do you mind sticking with us through a commercial break and we can continue this conversation in just a minute? Okay. Perfect. We'll be right back with more of the Jet Set in just a moment. Hello and welcome back to the Jet Set where we're talking about far-reaching effects of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. With us is Washington Post columnist and consumer advocate Christopher Elliott who is helping us understand how the invasion is affecting global travel. Mm -hmm. So Christopher, how, how can we help the people of Ukraine? 
I think that Americans are doing uh, almost everything they can to help Ukraine, short of a military intervention. I think that's really what the Ukrainians want right now, is they want NATO to come to their aid. Unfortunately, uh, since they're not NATO members, it's very difficult because if they do, they'll get dragged into the crisis and it'll it'll be a real big, big issue. And that will affect your vacation uh, this summer for certain. But um, but definitely uh, uh, donate to the charity of your uh, of your uh, choosing if you can. Um, there are going to be a lot of refugees coming across. If you can help them, that would be wonderful as well. Um, you know, one thing that I would say is there's a big debate going on right now on my newsletter, Elliot Confidential. And, you know, we have a discussion every Friday to just get, get kind of the pulse of what travelers are thinking. Mm -hmm. And right now we're having a really interesting debate about how far we should go with the sanctions. Should we cancel all of our trips that might, might be close to Russia? Should we not go to St. Petersburg um, on a cruise uh, or... Uh, and, and would that actually be punishing the wrong people? Are we punishing the Russians instead of punishing the Russian government? Or should there be these sh sanctions and should travelers absolutely refuse to go to Ukraine or to Russia this summer or ever again until this uh, conflict is resolved? And that, I would say, is an open question right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. I agree. You were talking about those cruise lines that are having their schedules changed and now they're not calling on St. Petersburg and other ports. There is undoubtedly someone out there who was really looking forward to that trip. And at some point, you know, the question's going to arise because that port that they booked to go visit, now they're not going to visit. Are folks due some sort of a refund in that situation? Is there a credit that the cruise lines should be giving them back? Or is this one of those situations where folks should just, you know, roll with the punches as they happen? Yeah, your ticket contract, your cruise contract, uh, it outlines all the rights that you have as a passenger. And in that ticket contract, it says that your cruise line can change a port of call at any time, doesn't even have to tell you. Mm -hmm. What it doesn't say, and what we, can, we know, and I can tell you now, is that when a port of call is, is changed, so for example, this person that I was talking about who had her a port of call in St. Petersburg changed to two days at sea, she would be due a refund of those port fees. And so you can talk to your travel agent or you can talk to the cruise line and ask for a, a port fees. They'll probably try to give you a cruise credit, you know, partial uh, cruise credit for right. that. But you should be able to get a full refund, as in money back into your account. Not bad. So that, that yeah. is some good advice. I would never would have thought of the port fees. There's so many things to think about. Good thing we have Christopher here. I know. <laughs> Christopher, where can people go to follow you and learn more? Yes, uh, you can find my nonprofit consumer advocacy organization. It's Elliot Advocacy at Elliot.org. That's E-L-L-I-O-T-T -T dot O-R-G. I also have a newsletter called Elliot Confidential. That's just Elliot with two L's, two T's, confidential.com. Um, and you can read me in the Washington Post, USA Today. I have two nationally syndicated columns. And I'm on with you, too. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us, Christopher. Really, yes. this was a great conversation and a lot of really useful information. Yes, thank you so much, Christopher. Okay, sure thing. SeaWorld San Diego is excited to announce the opening of one of the most anticipated new roller coasters in 2022, Emperor. Joining other thrill rides at the park, Emperor will be the tallest, fastest, and longest dive coaster in California, as well as the only floorless dive coaster in the state. Joining us now is Tyler Carter, VP of Park Operations at SeaWorld. Hi, Tyler. Welcome to the show. Awesome. Good morning. How are you? What is Emperor and what makes it unique? Sure. Uh, so Emperor is... For one, here in uh, North America, here at SeaWorld San Diego is the only place where you can actually meet emperor penguins. So we're actually going to experience um, what our emperor penguins in the environment go through with some steep dives. Uh, super exciting. How fast does emperor go? Sure, yeah. So we are about to navigate up. Our, our drop is at a 90 degree angle and it goes over 60 miles per hour. Does emperor go upside down? Correct. So we're going to have three inversions throughout the whole time. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> Can the whole family ride Emperor? Uh, so we do have a, a height minimum of 52 inches and a maximum of 78 inches, but any thrill seeker in that range, come on out and join us. When can people ride Emperor? Correct, yeah, so March 12th is when we, uh, is our grand opening. We will be doing some past member opportunities starting on March 2nd. This ride sounds amazing. Of course, and we're about to drop in a minute, so here we go. <laughs> Whoa, that is so high. I 
have so much fun. Wish you guys were here with us on it. And we're back. This ride sounds amazing. Thank you for coming on the show and showing it off. Of course. Thanks for being with us out here today. We've got to take one final break, but we'll be right back with more on the Jet Set. Don't go anywhere. 55% of women under the age of 55 in the U.S. wish their real-life romantic relationships mirrored the couples in their favorite books. Here with advice on bringing the romance novel spark into your real life is New York Times bestselling author Tessa Bailey. Book sales have soared to their highest levels in nearly a decade, and romance has been among the best sellers. With a new book, Hook, Line, and Sinker, coming out on March 1, New York Times bestselling author Tessa Bailey shares more. A recent survey by Sandals Resort's Institute of Romance says 79% of women in relationships read romance novels. A third of American women feel that those novels help them feel more fulfilled in their relationship. And 55% of women under the age of 55 in the U.S. wish their real-life romantic relationships mirrored the couples in their favorite books. Even after Valentine's Day is over, couples can bring that spice, spirit, swoon, and some happily ever after off the pages and into reality. Who doesn't want their own happily ever after? Nearly a quarter of all women surveyed claim their loved ones looked more attractive while reading. So if you've got a partner who's open to reading a novel with you, this may be the key to sparking some unexpected romance. For more expert advice on bringing the romance novel spark into your real life, visit the Institute of Romance online at sandals.com. Thanks for watching this week. Keep up with all of our travel adventures. Follow us online at thejetset.com or on Facebook at facebook.com slash thejetsettv. Mm -hmm. See you next week. Bye.